A year ago today, we got the bunny, didn't we? You came home a year ago today. It's your home birthday. Yeah. So it is time to finally, hello Margs, put onto a video. <laughs> what are you doing? Put onto a video how we got our rescue dog, Bunny. I've had a few people asking, um, when are you going to tell us all about Bunny? I'm going to tell you right now. I'll give you the backstory. Last year, when we were on holiday in the Alps, we were having a conversation about how Margot, as sweet as she is, is not a very good family pet. She is utterly obsessed with me and me alone. She tolerates the children. She will growl at them if they go to pick her up or stroke her. If they're sitting down watching TV, she'll hop up on their laps very rarely. Let's just reorganise myself. because I'm smothered in dogs. Come on, Margot, this is not your story. You can have your own story another day. We need a bigger chair, don't we, Van? There we go. So we were having a conversation about how it would be lovely to have a dog we could go on walks with, who was interested in the children, and was just a normal dog, rather than a cat in dog's clothing. We had a conversation about what we would be looking for in a dog. We decided that um, we wanted a bigger dog than Margot, but not by vast amounts because we've got three children and if we go on holiday we drive and, and we, we don't have an enormous amount of space in, in the car for a big dog. So we were thinking something like a... maybe a wire-haired Norfolk Terrier, that that kind of dog. We didn't want it to melt, molt. We didn't want it to molt. We didn't, <laughs> ridiculous, this is ridiculous. We didn't want to be able to see its bum hole. <laughs> you know, we wanted it to be sort of furry around the rear end. Little poos, not big Labrador style poos. We ideally wanted to know the history of the dog. So we were looking for a um, maybe a Parsons Terrier, something like that, that had been um, owners have become ill or separated or had to live abroad, something like that. Are we boring you, Bun? Her ears are so soft. Yeah, that, that's the kind of dog we were looking for. <laughs> Something that we had a bit of an idea of how they were going to fit in with the family. Then that evening, I was on the website, Pets for Homes, and I was scrolling through and a perfect dog came up in Bristol called Button. So I added that dog to our favourites. And I carried on scrolling and then another dog came up that was slightly further away and I added that to my favourites. And then this picture of a dog filled my screen and my breath caught and I just thought, oh, I love her. I didn't even know it was a she at that point. I just thought, I love this dog. And the reason why is because she was so similar, so similar to the dog that I grew up with called Gypsy. So I clicked on the picture and scrolled through and um, this, this dog just tugged at my heartstrings. I felt this sense of longing and 
that feeling of you know when you've missed somebody and then you get to see them and you haven't seen them for ages that that sort of feeling go off so i <laughs> All the um, information that was shared about her was that she was, at the time, called Ruby. She had been rescued and brought over from Spain. And um, she was staying in Wincanton. And I thought, oh, that's funny, since I grew up in Wincanton with my dog Gypsy. So I pinged off an email, Toby was asleep, but I pinged off a message saying, interested to meet this dog, can we have a home check? That kind of thing. And very, very quickly, it happened that we got back from France, we had a home check. It was bank holiday Monday, August bank holiday Monday, went for lunch at my mum's and then went to Wincanton to meet Ruby. So we pulled up outside this house and I thought, this house is familiar. I think my friends, my friend used to live here, like a girl I was, I think a girl I used to go to school with lived here. This is, I think this is her, her mum's old house. Um, and then the lady opened the door. I looked at the lady and I thought, it's a girl I was at school with and it turned out that her husband was um, I used to work with his aunt I knew his cousins pretty well because they used to go he used to go out one of the cousins used to go out with my neighbor um, another of his cousins went out with one of my friends you know small town bye bye buddy she's off and it was ju it just seemed really strange that there was this dog in Wincanton who looked exactly like my dog and was in a house that felt very familiar to me and there was a girl I was at school with. It was just the strangest thing. Can you get us working? Why don't yeah, you well, sit? Give it to me. There we go. You sit down with her. Really you sit down with her then. Yeah. You sit down. Sit down, sir. Good girl. Lie down. Sit down. Good girl. That's a good girl. Well done. <laughs> She's so excited. Oh, all I can get is a waggy tail wheel. Ruby, <laughs> 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 oh. Sit. Sit. There. Yeah, go on. <laughs> she looks, she <laughs> literally I looks got, like she's got... smiling, Will. <laughs> She's smiling, her teeth have gone up like that. She's always just jumping onto my arm. Like <laughs> that. What do you think, Mike? You're like that, Margot. Oh, right. She met Margot, everything was fine. I went back a couple of days later to pick her up. So. Just move it that way, Bill. Ted is putting up our old stair gate. Bill's helping oh, hold it up. Coming. Wilfred and I are just inspecting the work, aren't we, Wilf? Mm. Push hard. Keep it. Okay. Well done. You need to push harder. Because <laughs> <laughs> the drill, that part of the drill is sitting there, so I can't actually push. Good work. work. Hello. Ow, what am I sitting in? No. Right, we have turned Hello. up in uh, a place I know really well. It's Wincanton. Wincanton. <laughs> and we're picking up our new dog. Dog. Well, maybe. Oh, I see a cat. Maybe. maybe. She's, maybe she's coming for a week and we're really hoping that she settles in, aren't we, Will? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right, let's go get her then. Bye, you. Here she is. <laughs> Dog's quite happy. So we are, well, remember, you've got to be calm. We're just taking her for a walk around the block. And then we're going to pop her in the car. We're going to give her a, going to give her a treat. Pop her in the car. She currently, she's bed. quite a puller on the lead. And, yeah. But she does like a good, that's nice. <laughs> Cock your leg, you're a girl. <laughs> um, that's very nice. She does pull, but she does seem to settle down a bit. So we're going to walk down here around the block now. She's settling down with us. This she's is so familiar to me. She, she loves us. Because I, she does, I think. I think she loves everybody. All she around here is where I used up, to go so walking as a kid. Mum, look at all the badger mucks there is down there. And Rachel Potter. And she just ignored that badger muck, did she? Yeah. That was that good one. then. And that tiny little uh, seed bone to a bird. So, we pop out here. There's a park down here. And then we can do a circuit and get back to our car. Look at their little tail going. Aww. So cool. Bang. She's loving a sniff. Are you pulling on it? Not at all. I think she's now getting used to the walk. So she didn't want to get in the crate. She was really sad about it. But look. Look at girl on you. That's enough now. We don't want to upset your tum. What a sweetheart you are. Pardon, Will? No, she's a girl dog. She just keeps... No, but Mar- is Marga your dog? So this is- <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, she's your dog. Yeah. Shame it's raining. Yeah. Oh, she's so sweet. You do the alarm, Margs. Hello, Poggy. Come on, then. Here we go. They seem all right. They actually seem fine. Let's just go in. Oh, oh, look at a little tail. Mom, Come on then, keep her on her lip. Yogurt, yeah. Look, look what she's doing now. Oh, I'm going to get a surprise thing. Yeah? On the yogurt. Look at her little tail. Oh, she's trying to see if Margaret got anything there. Well, that's good that Margaret doesn't have anything there. She travelled brilliantly in the car. She was in- incredible. Um, but then I guess she was used to travelling in the car because she had travelled all the way through Spain and France and across from the east of England to the west not very long before. She'd only been with her foster parents about a week before we... Um, went and picked her up. They had only just put the photograph on that day of um, Bunny and I found her very quickly. I was the first person to show any interest. It just was meant to be. We brought her home and she settled in really well. We had a few hiccups. She started scent marking everywhere. She would um, go to the bathroom where she fancied um she bit Margot twice in a territorial sort of way um there were there were just a few sort of teething problems but nothing major nothing major at all it is a marvel that she's just not damaged by any of her experience to a great degree. So her history, we, is sketchy. We are not really sure what happened. The the, um, charity that rescued her was not really sure what happened to her. She has had a tough time. Bunny, as we then called her, she was called Ruby, but we called her Bunny. And I've got a photograph of the list of names. I've wanted to call every child and every animal Django. And I've always been outvoted. Don't know why, because I think Django's a brilliant name. 
brilliant. In fact, maybe I could be called Django. Django Cuckoo. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we renamed her Bunny. And Bunny, she now is. And she even puts me in mind of a bunny with her little bunny rabbit feet. Because she's got funny little feet. She's, she has had a tough time. When the charity that has since collapsed because Brexit, um, I don't think it would have got through Covid either. Um, when they found her, she was in a concrete and metal cage where the when they fed the dogs, they would just drive along, just chucking, there were so many dogs, just chucking food through the grill. And um, this is my understanding of it. Uh, the, the pound where she was kept before she was sent to um, death row, 48, she was on 48 hours notice of being put down. So she'd been transferred to a killing station, um, at which point the charity extracted her. So the charity had been in, met the dog, and previously, about four months previously, when, when she was in the pound, and um, registered an interest so that if the dog didn't get reclaimed or rehomed, adopted, then they would they would extract her, which is exactly what happened. Why nobody wanted to adopt Bunny, I just cannot fathom. She is the dearest little thing. And you can see from the video of when she was in that horrible pound, she, they would jet wash to clear it. The dogs were never taken out. Their jet, dogs would jet it. They used to just jet wash to clean the kennels. So she would get up on, on the side ledge. So you can see here, she's standing on the side ledge and she's, wagging her tail at the lady who's Spanish lady who's talking to her and telling her that she was a pretty perro or the bit of perro and um <laughs> I couldn't really hear what she said on the video that's, that's my version of it <laughs> and um she's still wagging her tail and just bless her little heart so when the charity got her she wasn't into terrible condition she was very skinny but um she'd really weathered the storm so well she was such a hardy dog she must have been fit as a fiddle when she went in to the um to the pound now we don't really know why she was in there when we don't know whether she was abandoned by previous owners or if she was a street dog but she had been spayed whether that was to do with the, um, they have a, like a pet, not a pet control, a dog control system in that region there where stray dogs get neutered. Whether she was neutered because of a government thing or whether she had been a much loved pet and was abandoned, we don't know. She does show signs of being streetwise she has absolutely no loyalty to anybody she loves everybody and that's very much a street dog they're opportunists so that wouldn't surprise me if she was a street dog but equally she settled into our home so easily and readily I feel like she knew how to do it I feel like she has had a home somewhere and <laughs> Being such a lovely dog, it breaks my heart to think that they either had to give her up because they could no longer keep her and therefore uh, heartbroken, or I think, I really feel that she ran off, she got lost and they couldn't find her and they checked everywhere, but because she was so wily and friendly, she just stayed on the streets for a while. So they they gave up looking and by the time she was found and put in the pound, that's my theory, that they had stopped looking, by the time she was found and put in the pound, they had given up all hope. That's, that's sort of my theory. Now, I'm probably completely wrong, but we will never know. We're just trying to put together the jigsaw.
when we got her home, she she was glossy and fit and healthy. Um, I took her to the vets to have a checkup, and they said, "Oh, she's got she's got a lot of flea scabs still attached." So so she must have been absolutely flea ridden when she was in the pound and then subsequently moved to the killing station. Um, so it took a little while, a couple of weeks for all the flea scabs to come out of her fur. She has a really big scar under her neck, a deep scar here. Uh, she has got such broken teeth, her teeth are all worn out the fangs the ones that hang out like this there they have got these grooves in them like that where she gnawed on the bars to get out of this cage this kennel so that they're either broken off or they've got these grooves from gnawing at the um, bars to escape the kennel bless her another reason why i don't necessarily believe that she had always been a street dog is that she's not especially motivated by food. Her prey instinct totally overrules her desire for any tasty morsel, morsels. She won't come back to you for love nor money if she's got a whiff or a sniff of anything. One day we used to have a tracker on her but it's fell off and got lost and I can't let her off her lead now anyway because one day she was doing so well with her training and then she just scarpered and she went four miles away into the next village and I was tracking her and I was following her and I got to the point where I thought I need to <laughs> I need to go back home and get in my car and try and find her she's just she's just going but I noticed that she'd started to come back. She was on her way home. So I intercepted her and her face was covered in blood. Absolutely covered in blood. And she sauntered up the lane to me like, all right, what's the matter then? Why are you puffed out and sweaty and looking stricken? So um, she's not been let off the lead since. And another two reasons why she's not been let off the lead since is because when I was picking wild garlic and she was on her extendable lead, I heard this sort of flapping and a funny noise and a bit of a tug on the end of the lead. And I turned around and she'd got one of Pete's chickens in her mouth, one of the chickens that just goes up and down the lane. Luckily, it was just the chicken's wing. So it, the feathers came out and the chicken went off and she was a bit fluffed up, but she was fine. And then another time I was walking through a hedge to go over a stile. Bunny suddenly went mm, like this. There was a squeak and she caught a squirrel and killed it. So there is no way we're letting her off the lead because that could be somebody's cat, somebody's pet. Or she might be chasing something and she'll run out and go under a car. So no, she, she stays on her lead now and will never be let off. Bunny has some really cute, quirky, quirky little things. She's got her little ear. When she's, when she's interested in something, her ears, instead of being like this, they go out to the side. It's so adorable. Whenever you go over to her to give her a kiss, she instantly rolls onto her back and makes you stroke her tummy. It's just sweet as anything. Um, she does this little thing with her paws when she's excited or she wants something. Um, if she wants to be stroked, she'll nudge you with her nose and it doesn't matter if you've got a coffee in your hand, she'll send it flying. What now? What is it now? Where are you gone? Um... And then she does this adorable thing <laughs> in the evenings when she's wanting her treat. Um, you say to her, go get in your bed, go get in your bed. There are a few legacies from her previous life where she shows signs of fear, potentially abuse. Or maybe she's just, that's just bunny. She hates putting her harness on, you go to put anything over her head and she just gets a bit stressed about it. We've got a technique of how to do it now. We 
put the harness right up our arm and we stroke her under her chin, lean down to give her a kiss, slip the harness on. Done. Easy. Um, she, <laughs> she does the flea nibbling thing where she goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she doesn't only do it to herself, she does it to us. She'll nibble the fleas off us. It's really cute. Um, if you drop a magazine or anything like that, she, um, she'll she run away and she'll cower. If she sees a gun, a Nerf gun, um, a water pistol, anything like that, she runs off and cowers. She's fine with the hoover. She's fine with the broom. She's um, fine with fireworks and other loud noises. Completely not phased at all. She travels really well, really well. Uh, sometimes, sometimes for no reason at all, she gets shivery and quivery and all, and she'll be sitting there and you can just see she's just shaking in her boots. About twice a month, she'll have a bed day where she takes to her bed and she just, she's obviously not feeling great. Um, nothing to worry about. I've asked the vets about it and um, they've said she's fit as a fiddle, absolutely fit as a fiddle. They think she's about seven years old but they can't really tell because they go by the teeth and her teeth are so damaged that it's really difficult to tell from the wear whether um, how old she is but they think she's about seven. But weirdly in her pet passport there is a date of birth that would tell me that she's going to be eight on November the 23rd. But I don't know how they know that. She's obviously scared of jet washes, but that's understandable. You can, you can fathom out why, it's not rocket science. The good thing with her is she's an exceptionally good guard dog. However, she even guards the house from us. So if one of the children comes back in from the trampoline, she sees them at the door, she barks like she doesn't know them. Then they open the door and then she runs up to them like, oh, hi, you're back. She doesn't like it when um, some of us are out of the house. She likes to herd us all together. She likes us all to be together. That's when she's her calmest and happiest. Margot is much calmer and happier with Bunny around. Bunny has definitely become the top dog. She's the one in charge. She's the dominant dog. We were so interested to find out what breed Bunny is made up of. She's obviously many different breeds. <laughs> so from Amazon, I got one of these DNA tests. I couldn't film doing it, but we just twirled this in between her lips and her gums. 15 seconds, one on each side. She was all right, wasn't she? Yeah. It's just a little, little tail. tail. Still going. A little waggy tail. Yeah. We're going to find out what you are. I'm thinking Lurcher Pointer Whippet. Good. Sort of one of those Badger. sort of thing. Badger cow. <laughs> and... Standard Jack Russell, Border Collie. Bit of Collie, maybe. What do you think? Uh, yeah, like a Greyhound Lurcher, Border Collie. Um, do you agree with me or have um, you got any no. from the outside? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Do you think she got Labrador? No, don't think so. No, I don't think so. Either. Maybe, I don't know. She's got maybe, uh, pure magical beauty. Maybe a Dalmatian. Oh, yeah. Could be a bit of Dalmatian in there. She's just a bit of everything, basically, isn't <laughs> What's Wolf doing? <laughs> Lovely, aren't you? And <laughs> did the swab and sent it off and the results came back. <laughs> and it didn't tell us very much at all. If I'd done it for Margot, it probably would have come back 98% toy poodle and then a couple of other little quirky things but it basically came back and said this dog is 80th generation street dog there are so many different dna's in her blood 
Uh, so they narrowed it down into which of the four main groups, I think there's companion dogs, hunting dogs, working dogs, they, they narrowed it down and basically the, the, the ones, the, the profiles that fitted best were Beagle, so that would explain um, her nose and why and how she, I mean she can sniff something a mile off. She's got such a nose on her. Then they said Italian Greyhound. That would explain she's got quite a googly eye. The eyes are quite googly in the sockets. And it explains um, her funny feet. Um, also, possibly her fur, but then the beagle. She's got the same kind of fur texture as a beagle. So she could be one of those. She's got a bit of that. She has a bit of either of those in her. Um, the ears are probably more, they're kind of a bit beagle-ish cross between. Um, they're as mobile as the Italian greyhounds, but the shape is, um, they are smaller, but they're similar to my friend's beagle. Then the other dog is a uh, working cocker spaniel which would explain the black and white colouring because they often come in black and white. So, so there we go. They also said hilariously that she got um, some toy poodle in her, which just, <laughs> that explains why she wants to be on our laps all the time. But there was a whole host of other things, but those, those three dogs were kind of the, the, the more prominent ones and the ones that we've looked at and thought out of the, the options they gave us well they they fit but really we haven't got a clue we have not got a clue she is just a thoroughbred mongrel and we love her to bits couldn't love her more she's a terrible escape artist the window was open in the um in the den where we where the big gray sofa is and we watch the telly all of us in the evenings um the window was open there and she jumped up onto the sofa onto the windowsill and took herself off early one morning and um was found around my neighbor's house then we spent some time um we spent some time bunny proofing the garden the bigger garden thought we'd nailed it and then we got a call from our neighbours. We, we, we'd realised we hadn't seen her for a couple of seconds. We, then we, a few minutes later, while we were looking for her, we got a call from our neighbours saying, we've got Bunny, little monkey. And then she slipped out when somebody was going out the front door the other day and um, nobody realised she'd slipped out. And she'd gone up to the other neighbours. She'd walked... Round, she'd gone up the lane, down their driveway, into their garden, through their garden. They were having a lunch with some friends with the bifold doors wide open. And she just walked in and went and sat down by the table looking up like, hiya, sorry I'm late. <laughs> so they brought her back. And weirdly enough, here's the weird thing, right? So, um... Bunny was fostered in Wincanton. The lady who's moved, the new lady who's moved into next door, grew up in Wincanton, three doors down from where my dad still lives, where I grew up. And then if I go one, two, three doors down again, but about half a mile away, um, Sue, who lives on the corner, um, I went to school with her in Wincanton, so over an hour away, um, and we had uh, clarinet lessons together. How mad is that? It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. So many coincidences. And there's another really funny coincidence with my neighbour Amy and my neighbour Lizzie, where um, 23 years ago, f 
for three months. They travelled around Australia kind of together in a bit of a group. They, um, it was, Amy was going out with some bloke who was best mates with the bloke that Lizzie's best mate was going out with. That was in Australia. Amy comes from Hertfordshire and now they're next door neighbours quarter of a mile or half a mile away from one another because apart from this little little bunch of us here everybody's really spread out this is just bananas it's just bananas and I love it so there we go there is the story of Bunny and how we got her and why she was definitely meant to be our dog definitely and now because the world is so small with social media, I worry my socks off that somebody is going to come along and go, that's my dog. I lost her and I want her back. And I was having the conversation with Toby and I said, what would you do? And he said, well, you know, if, if we lost her and somebody took her in and loved her and gave her a home, I'd still want her back. So I think we would have to give her back. And I said to him, never, I will run away with her. I will never, ever part with her. If they couldn't keep hold of her, they weren't supposed to have her. <laughs> I hate the fact that she molts badly, absolutely everywhere. That's a nuisance, but I forgive her. I don't mind that she's got big poos and you can see her bottom. I don't mind that we don't know her history. So all of those things that we didn't want in a dog, that we have got in a dog, I don't need to mind. And it is such a love thing with Toby. Oh, they love each other. gorgeous it's just gorgeous thank you very much as always for watching thank you for being here hello googly eyes Oh, I forgot to say, in the evenings when it's time to go to bed and we say, come on then, bunny, let's go out for a wee wee. She jumps up off the sofa, gets on the floor, <laughs> lands on the floor and she'll sneeze a few times and she'll flap her ears. <laughs> Look at your googly eyes. And she seeks out any sunny spot she that's my that's my boob she seeks out any sunny spot that she can find and she'll sunbathe in it she loves the heat that's because you're spanish isn't it yes that is because i am spanish and i love the sunny weather Bunny loves to curl up in small beds. The smaller, the better. She will curl up in that and she will make herself a little nest. She loves nests. Have you made a little nest? Did I disturb you? In your bed, in your bed.
look at them now. Bunny is leaning on Margot and having a sleep. This is not a bad thing, is it? It's going to be okay, isn't it? Um, Bunny, do you mind? Breath is smelly. <laughs>